you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So uh, on Thursday when the, the quilting group was here, um, uh, one of the uh, people had her granddaughter with her and uh, I was kind of keeping her busy. We were, we were playing, we were best buds. And uh, at one point, um, I, I kept having to go back and forth between my office and, and talking to Sonia. So I was going back and forth and, and, you know, she was following me. And of course, but it wasn't good enough just to follow me since she knew where I was going. She always had to beat me there. <clears throat> and so, so I'd, I'd get up off out of, from my desk, up from my computer, and I'd say, she says, are you going to see your sister again? Because <laughs> she, she thought Sonia was my sister. So. so I said, yeah. And so she'd run and get there, and she'd say, ha, ha, I got here first. You know, we, we're like that, aren't we? We, we like to compete we like to be on top. We like to be number one. We like to be the best. We like to be the best. So, who's the best Christian you know? Who's the best Christian? Anybody? Yeah. Paul was running into that problem with the Philippians. They were comparing themselves back and forth as to who was the best, who had the best um, pedigree, or who had the best uh, resume, or, or whatever it would be. Who is the best among them? And so Paul, Paul says, okay, if you want to compare one another, he says, compare yourself to me. And then he goes through this long line of qualifications that Paul has. And essentially, when, when he's done, when he's done at the end of it, there's no one left standing because no one could compare to Paul. I mean, he, he, he was born of... of uh, Hebrew mother and father. He was circumcised on the eighth day exactly like he was supposed to be. He went to school and learned to be a Pharisee. And, and the Pharisees were, were the most uh, learned, most, uh, you know, they were the ones that were always walking around in the streets showing off how good they were at being Jews. They were also the ones that kept walking around saying, oh, you're, you know, you're not a very good one. You know, they were the ones who were always casting judgment. And so Paul says, look at me, I was a Pharisee. Not just a Pharisee, I was way up there to the point where I even persecuted the church because I was so zealous, so zealous for God. But Paul then goes on to say, but you know what? That doesn't mean a thing. That is not what's important. There, there are many conflicts that go on in our world today. Um, and and it, was, it was interesting. Yesterday I was having a conversation uh, with... It was so weird. I, I went to uh, Sonia's mom's funeral yesterday and I ran into somebody that I knew from college. <laughs> if, that's not, if that's not crazy, I don't know what. So we had this long conversation. And we got into, you know, a discussion. And, and uh, her, she finally asked the, asked the question, she says, how is it that two people can read the same thing in the Bible and interpret it so differently? Yeah? It's true, isn't it? We see things differently. And, and then we get to the point where we think, well, if you don't see things the same way I do, then you must be wrong. Because, of course, God agrees with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And so we compare ourselves. And, and in, our, in our rush and in our zeal to want to always be right, we end up doing things like the Pharisees did to Mary in the Gospel lesson. Or Judas, sorry, like Judas did in the Gospel lesson. How, how he condemned her. And, and he so righteously did so. Wow, look at that waste that, that she did. She wasted this, this perfume. Just, you know, every once in a while I like to add some, some interesting facts that put things into perspective. Nard is, is grown from a plant, and it's a very fragrant uh, plant, but it's only grown in, like, India and, and China and places far away from the Middle East. So this, this plant, this, this nard that, that made up this perfume was really expensive because it had to be brought by caravan on camels across the desert to the Middle East, to, to Israel, to Bethany finally. And, and we're told that the perfume that she uses is made of pure nard. Not, not diluted, not um, watered down or other additives. It's pure nard. That's to tell us this is really, really expensive stuff. Okay? And then Judas goes on to say it could be sold for 300 denarii. Well, 300 denarii is, is, is nigh on a fortune. And so Judas thinks himself righteous enough to condemn her for this waste. Paul, in, in, uh, in talking with the Philippians, or in writing to the Philippians, is trying to encourage them to focus on what's really important. What's really important. And, and not in comparing ourselves, but in seeking, in seeking every day to be just a little better than I was yesterday. That's this idea of press, pressing on. We press on to, to the day of, of the second coming of Christ when he comes home again and, and takes us home with him. And so we press on each and every day. And not just that, we don't just press on ourselves, but we encourage one another to come along with us. I had, uh, I, I had one uh, friend a few years ago, um, you know, we were talking about what's your personal mission statement in your life? And he said, my mission statement is to get to heaven and bring as many people with me as I can. Yeah. Then I was talking with another friend who, uh, who said that uh, his mission statement is that he's a crown repairman. You know, the Bible talks about how, you know, don't, don't let someone take and tarnish and damage your crown. The crown that Christ, that God puts on your head, the, that that sense of self, that sense of belonging that you have because you are of ultimate value to God. That's why Jesus Christ died for us on a cross. And so this friend of mine says, I'm in the crown repair business. When I find someone who, whose, whose crown has been damaged, I do whatever I can to help repair it. Rather than being in competition with one another, that's what God is seeking from us. Is seeking to, asks us to love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it means. That, that we feel that our neighbors um, future is as precious to us as our own. That we feel that our neighbors 
life is as precious to us as our own. And so Paul says, all of that other stuff, all of those achievements, all of that, uh, that, that stuff that I could brag about doesn't matter. Because the thing that matters is Christ Jesus and keeping my eyes on him. Keeping my eyes focused on what's really important. On, on as, as, my, as my friend said, on getting to heaven and bringing as many people with me as I can. Let's press on. Let's, let's continue on to, to the prize. Not, not because we somehow want to win or gain it for ourselves, but because Christ has already done that for us. Christ has already run and won the race. And he gives us his victory so that we, we can believe and trust and hope in the future because Christ has secured it for us. Amen.